Welcome to Development Dynamics with Maxi, another another season, another time. This time we are being hosted at the Ulwazi place, conveniently located in the serene and lush greenery area of Kitusuru, away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life, of everyday living, a really convenient place for you to come and do your home living, your business meetings. Uh, thank you so much for to Uluwazi for having us here, for hosting us, for giving us a fantastic breakfast, a fantastic welcome. And we are, we are delighted to do this season and subsequent seasons from here. And we'll be walking you through this fa fantastic set of um, uh, property and showing you around um, uh, from in this place. But more excited, we are also having a lovely guest this season. Um, a dear friend of mine and, and, and someone who uh, observed in this field transforming many lives. She is a leader in the education and child protection sector. She has um, served as the chief executive officer and field director at Vision Africa, giving a child a future. And she's currently the chief, ex uh, the executive director of Dignis Dignitas Project, where um, she's been rallying a global conversation, a very important conversation uh, on, on that, on the role of school leaders as agents of change, particularly for unprivileged and underserved communities. And um, she's also Kenya's country lead for the Rally Africa, and she'll let us know what that is about. Uh, but in, in, in a national, it's a member-driven organization that brings together up to 70 uh, education leaders uh, across uh, the region, uh, all focused on improving learning outcomes for the most uh, uh, underserved. She's also the founder and trustee of Raising Futures Kenya, an award-winning platform and program for out of school. So she's not only uh, focusing on education, but she's also focusing on those ones who do not access education or have uh, left the education uh, programs out of school youth based in Nairobi. She's a mother of three and a wife to one, and she let, she'll let she be letting us know. Deborah Kimathi, welcome Thanks. to uh, Development Dynamics with Maxi. We're really privileged that you could create time and join us very early I'm to really talk about to, your yeah. life and mm -hmm. your journey in the development field mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and to be one of the few uh, members who begin this journey with us here. So welcome, welcome on board, Thank welcome so on much. set. Thank you, I'm really excited to be here and looking forward to our conversation. Karibu sana. Um, it's the beginning of the year, it's the beginning of 2022. Mm -hmm. How was your Christmas? Christmas was good. Yes. Seems like a long time ago yes. already. Yes. <laughs> um, was fortunate to have some visitors from the UK who we've not seen for a long time, thanks to COVID. Very nice. Um, but it was good. Lots of family time, lots yeah. of food. <laughs> yeah. 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 Speaking of the UK, is that, um, and also co trying to connect that and segue back to your mm -hmm. origins, that's mm -hmm. where I like to start with all my guests. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's go back to your very roots. Mm -hmm. Where does Deborah come from? <laughs> so Deborah was born in Belfast, uh -huh. in Northern Ireland. All right. Um, right in the middle of what's known as the Troubles, when the IRA were fighting for uh, space, yes. uh, let's say, in Northern Ireland. And, he and that, yeah, the back and forth between those who wanted to be part of the UK and those who wanted Ireland to be a whole. Um, but interestingly, born there, lived there until about age nine uh -huh. um, and was completely unaware uh -huh. that we were in a country that was essentially at war with itself. All right. Um, I think when you grow up somewhere as a child and it's your norm, yeah. you, you don't know anything different. So yeah. you just kind of get on with life. <laughs> Why are you an only child? <laughs> no, nope, I have two brothers. Uh -huh. um, so with two years between each of us, so I... two younger brothers. Oh, two younger brothers. Firstborn. You're the, you're, you're the firstborn, a notorious uh, hard <laughs> Or firstborn, or just Some would say. A, a good, nice, uh, caregiving firstborn. Uh, Maybe you sister. should ask my brothers, <laughs> <laughs> or even my hubby. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Um, so yeah, it, Belfast is a great place. We moved to Scotland when I was about age nine. Yeah. Um, what are your fondest memories of of, of Belfast? Hmm. First, before you even moved to Scotland. Um, I think I remember it being a very warm, hospitable place. Mm -hmm. Um, so when I think of my childhood memories, I think of 
um, friends and, and interestingly my, my parents had moved there away from their families so mm -hmm. their families were in other parts of the UK right um, so we didn't have a lot of relatives there as such but yeah. I remember community yeah um, largely um, through church but just mm -hmm. that sense of, of a wider family around us mm. um, and of course my parents mm. um, I have been extremely blessed with amazing parents Very nice. um, so being able to as an adult look back on that I think is a blessing as mm. well because mm. you don't realize how rare that is until you <laughs> become yeah. an adult yourself I yeah think. yeah um so so yeah definitely family friends people yeah um and just that sense of sense of warmth and yeah. community yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so you, you you grew up there you started your schooling from there yep, as well i did yeah um went to a, a primary uh, nursery and primary school mm -hmm. up to primary five um in the uh, we say british system but it's yeah. not quite british because it changes in different parts of the uk but yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um loved school there yeah um had some of the most fantastic teachers who i remember to this day right I remember my primary one teacher mm. uh, mrs tease was her name <laughs> <laughs> um, uh. and she used to reward us with cash <laughs> oh cash <laughs> Yeah, I have oh, no wow. idea how that started. Or, wow. I mean, I don't think you'd get away with it today. Mm. But I remember we used to be given 10 pence. <laughs> oh, wow. If we had uh, performed uh, well. Remarkably in, yeah. well, okay. <laughs> um, and remember my uh, primary four teacher, especially. Mm -hmm. um, she was called Miss Green. Um, just teachers, I think, make such a critical difference yes. in a child's education. Yeah. And, and so just, again, that experience of school being a place that genuinely felt nurturing yeah. and loving and a caring environment yes um, and that came back to some of those teachers i think right so you've got the best me. of both worlds at home and then in school mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. you are 24 hours were surrounded <laughs> with with love and <laughs> absolutely care. yeah yeah i mean yeah and i realize that's a huge privilege but yeah that's yeah. really 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 yeah. nice and yeah. that continued until now you 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 moved to scot w so, what was the reason for moving to scotland um i mostly family mm -hmm. be closer to, to wider family we mm -hmm. had a, a death in the wider family and okay. i think my, my parents felt that need to be closer mm -hmm. um we moved back as soon as primary five mm -hmm. um it's actually when i began to hate school oh dear okay <laughs> um it was just a difficult transition mm -hmm. school wise for me um mm -hmm. i think moving into a, a schooling environment where everybody already knows each other mm -hmm. so you come in as the outsider mm. you have this funny irish accent mm. <laughs> i wore big thick specs mm. my eyes are horrible so i had those big thick plastic lenses like this that stuck out the side of the frames mm. <laughs> uh, big frizzy hair i don't know everything just seemed to work against me mm. um, and i'll never forget my first day in the, my primary five class when we moved to scotland and the teacher made me stand up me at the front of the class i remember her name was mrs murphy mm -hmm. i don't remember her as fondly as <laughs> the other yeah. and she made me stand up and she quizzed me about what it was like to live in belfast during the trouble she quizzed me about the ira it was clueless because as i say when you grew up grow up as a child in in that environment it's just your right norm. right you don't know that it's different you don't know that it's not normal to have bomb scares every <laughs> week you don't know that it's not normal to have armed police everywhere. You don't know that it's not normal um, to just go through certain things and, and know certain things about different parts of town behaving in different ways or belonging to different communities. And so I remember when she asked me it and I thought, what is this lady talking about? I have no idea. Mm. <laughs> but she put me on the spot, made me stand up at the front of class and quiz me on these things. That, mm. um, so I don't think that helped either. <laughs> mm. um, so yeah, it, it, it was an interesting experience. I struggled to settle in mm. at that school. And mm. to be honest, even through secondary, Thereafter, yeah. um, just struggled until upper secondary, st struggled to kind of make good friends mm. and kind of find mm. my space, mm. as it were. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and so that continued for, I mean, so that's how you're experiencing your, that's how you're breaking into your adolescence. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Um, and again, very fortunate that whilst school was not always the happiest of place, mm -hmm. um, home was a happy place. Great. Um, church has always been a big part of our lives. Mm -hmm. um, so I had friends and community there um, and that made a big difference. So I had other spaces that were safe and nurturing even when school was a difficult place to Great. be. Yeah. So your social world is, is, is breaking good. But I mean, despite uh, despite <laughs> yeah. this schooling not yeah. not no, yeah. no, no, no being as as awesome as you would wish for yeah. it to be. <laughs> yeah. um, so, ha, ha, what are your fondest memories of your of your teenage? Mm. Um, I think 
definitely again family mm -hmm. uh, just that that sense of being part of um a group of people who loved each other mm. fiercely mm. <laughs> and noisily and mm. uh, in all of the chaos of life mm. um but i think also without knowing it there were some big pieces in my teenage years that began to shape mm -hmm. um who i am today mm. um so th th a couple of big things i think one i did my first um, at that time, what we it was a youth trip with the church, and it was our first kind of international missions mm, trip. Mm. Um, now today, I have a very different perspective on short-term missions trips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, <laughs> at that point, I was very excited to go on this adventure. Mm. Um, we travelled to Eastern Europe to Moldova. Mm. Um, I was fourteen, as the youngest on the team, mm. um, and it was a disastrous trip in that we were supposed to have this very smooth journey mm -hmm. all the way there, but mm. we got stranded halfway. Our team got separated. Some of them were held up at gunpoint by police. Other, I mean, it was just, and we had no phones. It was before the days of mobile phones everywhere. So mm. we couldn't communicate home. We couldn't mm. communicate with each other. Mm. So, but it taught me a lot about what it means to, to show up in a community that's not mine. Mm -hmm. That even at that age to begin to process um, what it means to come into somebody's space as an outsider mm -hmm. um, what could bring to that space what I should bring mm -hmm. <laughs> the difference between those two mm -hmm. um, and to begin to look at, at some of those dynamics mm -hmm. between I, I guess what we know to be kind of wealthier mm -hmm. more developed countries mm -hmm. and, and others that are not mm -hmm. um, and I had no idea at the time that that's where my whole career would take me mm -hmm. but um, I guess that was kind of preemptive of, of mm -hmm. some of what I would continue mm -hmm. to process mm -hmm. Another thing that really shaped me in my teenage years, so mm -hmm. we were living in a kind of regular neighborhood mm -hmm. in Scotland. Mm. Um, we, we didn't struggle to right. put food on the table or anything, but yeah. we also weren't like hugely affluent. Mm -hmm. um, we weren't jetting off on mm. <laughs> holidays. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah a fairly normal, regular life. Mm -hmm. um, but we, my family was a very active per part of a church in what was Scotland's most deprived neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Statistically, it had the most heroin addicts, the east end of Glasgow had um, the most heroin addicts in the whole of Europe, mm -hmm. and the most children living without parents because their parents were in prison. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just, um, it, in many of the, the issues we see around poverty, underemployment, unemployment, right. drugs, addiction, mm -hmm. just all came together in, yeah. in that community. And that's where our church was. Mm -hmm. And again, very blessed to have parents who modeled love, modeled mm. generosity, modeled mm. service, and mm. um, modeled to what it, to me is very genuine kind of faith lived out. Yeah. Um, and so from a very young age, I had a very unsheltered <laughs> experience. Mm. Um, we used to have to have somebody um, on what we call car watch duty during church services. Car, car, car watch. Oh, car so watch. you had to stand outside and basically right. make sure no one stole cars during yeah. church. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's how bad it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I remember volunteering from about the age of 15 that I would do For this that. duty. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's interesting. I mean, just seeing so much of a world that, again, was not my own personal experience, mm -hmm. but that was a very real part of the world I was living mm -hmm. in and mm -hmm. something that mm -hmm. was in need of attention. Mm -hmm. um, and again, from probably about the age of, of 14, 15, mm -hmm. um, my dad began to do a lot of work with um, heroin addicts in the community. Mm -hmm. And many of these addicts wanted to get out of addiction, mm. wanted to go to rehab, but they had to go through cold turkey first. Mm. So they had, they had to do two, three days of just kind of um, leaving, not taking drugs mm. and, and everything that comes with that. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen anybody with withdrawals from a heroin addiction, but mm. it's, it's everything from vomiting to hallucinations mm. to shaky i mean it, it's horrific mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they couldn't get into rehab till they'd gone cold turkey for a certain period and, and my dad um figured we have a spare bedroom they can come go cold turkey in our house oh my goodness <laughs> so we grew up for a number of years with kind of addicts in and out of the house mm. and it's so funny because i think about it today as the mother of particularly two daughters mm -hmm. um, and i think would i have these guys in my house and mm. would i let them come stay for these two three days mm -hmm. i mean mm. addicts generally find themselves in lots of other trouble just mm. by way of being <laughs> in mm. addiction sadly mm. Mm. um and i don't know i don't know how my mom and dad 
processed it. I, I asked my dad. My mom sadly is no longer with us. Mm. Uh, but but yeah, I mean, I think for him it was just this need needed to be addressed, and he had a way of addressing it. What's and, that doing to you at that time? At, so, at, at the time, seeing this been exposed to this mm -hmm. you and your brothers are you feeling safe are you what wh and that what are the measures being put in mm -hmm. place around i mean it's a spare bedroom yes but yeah. in case these people mm -hmm. um <laughs> Go bazak. Are you? So I think I never felt unsafe. All right. I don't remember ever thinking mm -hmm. I'm not safe in my own home. Sure. So, um, my dad was very intentional. I mean, he and he had a full time job, mm -hmm. but he would sit with these guys all night long. Mm. <laughs> um, I do remember us coming home from school and being alone in the house with these guys, but again, not being scared. Mm. But I think it, because we had essentially through the church been part of community with these guys. Mm -hmm. They weren't strangers. They mm. weren't. Um, we may not have understood all of their issues, but mm. they weren't necessarily. I, I don't know. We didn't perceive them as a, as, a threat as in that way. Bad as, or as, as, yeah, as, as, yeah. as bad guys or they as were people threatful. who needed help. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then because all of that was taking place in this context of, of what we consistently saw our parents model mm -hmm. of love, of service, yeah. of generosity. Mm. Um, yeah, I just, I don't remember feeling All right. unsafe. And we mm. never had any ill mm -hmm. incident. Yeah. Um, my brothers and I, despite all of our um, wavering from side to side as we grew up, none mm. of us ever touched drugs. Mm. So maybe mm. <laughs> maybe that was a good thing mm. in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw the worst possible end result of touching drugs mm -hmm. and therefore. <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, I, I think what stands out to me from that time, as I say, is not, not a sense of feeling threatened, mm. not a sense of feeling unsafe, Very but a, a sense of just loving and being part of community and giving generously from from what we had. Very interesting yeah. perception and mm. that that arose from that. All right. Mm. Very, very, very nice yeah. to And to, the challenge, mm -hmm. sorry, just to sure. is I often think now as parents, mm. how do we model the that same. love, that generosity, yeah. that service? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and a lot has changed in the world in yeah. the last 30, yeah. 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> Would it be safe for us to open up our home in that way? What does that look like? Mm. We're living in a different society, obviously, to, mm. to what we were then. Mm. I don't know. It's, mm. it's one of the questions I find myself continually Battling. kind of, yeah. 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 Mm. <laughs> oh, wow. That's Those are three interesting, um, very real examples of mm -hmm. your um 14 to 15 period mm -hmm. um you know that shape a lot of who you end up becoming and we are looking forward to hearing a lot of how that you know mm -hmm. then evolves into who deborah is today mm -hmm.